Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to go ahead and start building out the microservices for branded, sending branded emails to clients outside. And what we're going to do from this diagram, we're going to create this section of the diagram. I know it's, it seemed like scribbly scrap, but in a video prior to this, it made perfect sense, uh, which most of my whiteboard uh, scratch uh, presentations end up being. Um, once you take a look at them a day or two later, they <laughs> just seem like a bunch of squiggly lines and boxes. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and build out the email list. And what I tend to do, this is just a site that I have kind of a lot of my solutions uh, in. This is just a biz app site collection. And I tend to put a lot of my document libraries and solutions in here. But because we're creating a, a microservice and this is supposed to be a service list or a list that um, is used by the service, I'm going to prefix all of these with SVC for service. And then I'm going to just do um, email requests. All right. And that's going to be and I don't I don't want to show these in the left now because that would get too noisy. So this email request will be this list here. I know I just named the email list here, but this is going to be my email request. And this email template, this is going to store all of our branded HTML. And I'm going to show you uh, what that's going to look like here in a second. And this would kind of be the magic, um, the Power Automate that process all these email requests. All right. So in the email request, we get this title and just like any default list, you kind of have to figure out what to use that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to let repurpose that title column as the to field. So and again, if you watch any of my videos, you know, you have to go into list settings to rename this column and this column only. Uh, only because I, I don't know what it is, but because it is a default column, if you rename it in the modern UI, it just renames it for the view and not a, a true renaming of the column in the back end. I, again, I have no idea why that's the case. So here I'm going to just put two address and then all my other ones I'm going to just create in the modern UI because my internal names will come out nice and clean and not, and I have spaces. So it would just save me some time. So here um, I would do a CC address and then the BCC address. And these are all going to be single line text, right? And I probably want to expand this probably to multi line, but as of right now, I'm going to just do uh, single line. And the reason why it could be multi line is because if if they need to send that to multiple addresses, they're just going to series those together with uh, semicolon separator, right? What with the e? That's what the caller is going to do, but. For, we can easily change it later, so I'm not too concerned with it. Uh, the other one's going to be the body, and that's definitely going to be a multi-line text. But I'm not going to have any uh, HTML or anything like that there. Then the next one's going to be, for this particular one, actually, let's take a look at the template because that's going to help guide us. Okay, so this is the template, and basically the template is going to be, again, I'm, I'm trying to label this fake when and where possible because I don't want this to kind of be misconstrued with the real Tesla. So we're going to have the logo here. This is going to have a, a, a photo of the the mats. Again, this is just about uh, car mats. Um, this is going to be order number, so this is going to be dynamic. This is going to be total, so that's going to be dynamic. And then check order status, we'll have a link. Uh, to the order status. The rest of this stuff is canned, right? This is part of the template. So this will never change per request. This will never change. This will never change. This will never change. So actually, the more I look into, into this, uh, this is going to be very specific to order confirmation for the floor mat. So we probably want to label this template as such. So what does that mean? Because this is going to be specific, specific to uh, order number, the caller flow, the calling flow has to pass in the order number, has to pass in the order total, um, has to pass in the order link. Um, and we don't do their name or anything like that. So this would probably be pretty straightforward. So because of that, let's add in, we actually, we don't need email body, but this would be used for another, because these are standard, right? Even though this particular template would not use email body, um, we're going to leave those in, but we do need to add an order number. 
And notice, even though these are uh, order number, I think order number could be mixed. It could be letters and, and numbers. So I'm definitely not going to do um, the number type, right? So order number could, could is going to be a mix of numbers and alphanumeric. Order total is going to be numbers only. But I'm going to have this passed over as a single line text and not force the caller to put this in a numeric format, right? So this is going to be order total, and I'm going to purposely do single line text for, for that scenario. From my experience, when you're passing data from one entity to the other entity, the keeping everything as a string, unless you absolutely must have it as a different type, like Boolean number, string seems to be less error prone when just passing the data over. And then if you need to format it as a Boolean, a date, or a number, then the receiving uh, process would then convert it over to a string. Because you can always convert from a string to any data type that you need, and it would just be less error prone when you're passing it over. That's just been my experience with templates, integration points, and so on and so forth. Uh, just to kind of keep it simple and keep it stringified really tend to save you a lot of headache just in that passing the data from one to the other. So that's just a little tip. All right. So this is for the most part ready to go. Now let's let's build our uh, let's build our list that's going to hold the actual HTML template. So here I am. I'm in site content and I'm going to just create a brand new list. And again, this is how I'm a prefix with SVC. And this is going to house all of the email templates that can be used. I'm going to repurpose this title column to be the template name. Okay. And the other thing, I just need the template body. And this definitely has to be multi-line text. I'm going to just call this the template HTML. Okay. So our new entry, and because we have our template HTML, this is going to be order confirmation uh, and actually I don't want to put spaces here I'm, I'm what should we call this all right car mass order confirmation a little verbose but you know from there you should understand exactly what you're doing and now I'm going to take this template so I'm, I'm gonna take this template that we have and uh, I'm going to the source and I'm gonna just copy all of this HTML so this is the source code here for that template and then I'm gonna just paste that here, right? So that's my closing HTML tag, which is a good sign that I have the beginning. And then this is my opening doc tag and my opening HTML. So, okay, so I have a document type, then I have an ocean HTML. So, and, and let's just go and say that. So this HTML, right? This is not just your standard HTML. This is HTML that has uh, the document type, all the metadata and the, and the header tag and all this other good stuff optimized for email clients, right? And there are certain tagging and things like that you need to have in the body for all the different email clients to uh, show this in the right way, especially on mobile and, and, and the different email clients, right? So you got Outlook, you got Outlook online, you got Gmail, you got um, the mail client for Apple and, and so on and so forth. So this template is optimized to work with all of those different um, clients and this is why you want to go and get a template dedicated to our design from the ground up for emails all right so this is going to be that uh, very simple list not too much heartburn there now let's go ahead and jump in and build our flow okay so before we kind of jump into the flow let's just go to our whiteboard and let's uh, keep track of where we are so we have this list schema created so we get checked there and we have the template schema created with our initial entry. And now we want to work on the send branded email flow. Okay. So now that we're here, what I would do is go to uh, new and this is going to be automated because it's going to respond to a SharePoint list item being created. So we're going to select this trigger here. And then again, I'm, I'm following the same uh, naming convention, SVC send branded email. And again, I'm doing I'm prefixing this with SVC because these are microservices and they're meant to be called by other calling flows or other flows. Right? So now let's just go ahead and fix our connection. Let's just let it know where we're pulling this list from that we're going to listening to. 
I've been getting this error, like this drop down is not populating all of the recent lists that I visit. So I'm going to switch away from the new designer and go back to the classic designer for flow. Okay, so and I'm going to be a good app maker and rename my actions to kind of make sure my flow is readable to uh, my fellow developers. And then I'm going to just go ahead and find the list. So I and this is another thing why I like using the single site collection for most of these solutions, especially for poly prototypes and demos. Um, I, I know right off the bat which site I'm looking for. Um, so this one's going to be service email requests. Okay, so now uh, now that this is going to be triggered, the first thing I want to do is grab the HTML template. So here I'm going to just do a get items. And this is going to get me all of the items in that template list. So I'll just go ahead and find an email template list. So that's going to be services email templates. And I want to filter this by where title, and again, this is that rename column equals, and then you have to do single ticks here, and then the key name for that template, which is gonna be this guy. To avoid typos, I'm gonna just copy and paste this. Okay, notice that, you know, the filter query uses the internal name, um, so regardless of what we named it from a display perspective, this is gonna be internal name. This is your um, OData query syntax so of equals, and this is the value that you're looking for. So as that template grows to multiple items, this is going to be um, more efficient to grab that and we can only expect one item. So again, before I move forward, I want to rename this. So I'm gonna just say get email template item, right? So that's what we're doing in that step. So now that we have, or we're gonna query that and we wanna save this HTML inside of a variable right because this is going to loop and i want to ex i'm only expecting one item so this is going to loop but i want to extract that value so instead of looping my entire process i want to contain that loop to a single variable so let's go ahead and create a variable to hold the template so i'm, I'm going to initialize this and let's just call this the uh, var email template and again, my naming convention is these are patterns that I picked up along the way and, and I kind of stick to them and they tend to work for me. And this is what we teach in the class as well. So uh, anytime we have a variable, that's going to be prefixed with a VAR and I'm going to name my action the exact same name. And the type is going to be a string. So that's going to be uh, allow me to hold all of that string variable, uh, the string uh, value. And the value, I'm going to leave blank because we're just initializing that. And then in this step, I want to set the variable with the HTML template, HTML from the email template. With filtering these, if I just type in var, that usually kind of get me where I need to be with the variables. And I select a set variable type. And this is going to be email template. And this is where I'm going to get from my email templates. I want to grab the template HTML. And as soon as I select that token, it forces this, um, this apply each, and then it's going to go ahead and set this variable. Okay. So now I'm done with this apply each. So this is going to, let's just say apply to each email template. Okay. So now that, that I'm saving the email template inside of this var email template variable, and now I can proceed with sending emails. So let's just go ahead and send email. As of right now, I'm going to use this Office 365 Outlook action. And the two is going to be, these are all going to be tokens that the calling flow will pass in, right? And we're just going to pull, peel this off of this list item here that triggered this process. So when it comes to the two, I need to grab the email that was sent. And because it's not an email type field that, uh, or has the keyword email in the, in the, um, column name, you have to select see more for when the email request is created for this particular action to get access to all of the site columns available to you. And that's going to be my two email address. And then my subject is going to be, oh, we didn't pass the subject, did we? See, and this is where you kind of grow in. So let's just, just do uh, test test. 
Um, so these are missing columns. So we have to go back to our SharePoint list and add in those missing columns. And that's to be expected, right? And then for the template, it's just going to be the var email template. Of course, we still need to, you know, replace tokens and all this other good stuff. But just to make sure things are working as expected, uh, this is enough to see if we get an email. So let's just go this. Let's just go and save this. Let's pop open our original email request or so our service email request list. And there's a couple of things we want to do with this. So one, we want to add in subject. That was a miss. So let's just go ahead and add that in. And it's not a big deal to add it in, right? So I'm going to just go to this existing column and go add a column, which is going to insert it to the right of the selected column. Hit next. And we just call this subject and then click save. All right, so that's gonna be our subject field. Um, so we can go ahead and drop that in. So let's just make sure that this is saved is another thing because this is brand new. Let's just make sure it's turned on. Yep, so the option is to turn it off, which means that it is already on. And now what we can do to test this, and this is a great unit test, I can just create a new record right here. And let's just do D Clark impact five, no CC, no BCC, uh, email body. We were not using this, so we, you know, we don't expect this to come up. We're not using this, so we don't expect this to come up. And then for the price, Okay, so here we have a flow that was created. All of this for the most part looks correct. Let's just look at the email that was sent. So that's the email. This is the body text. And let me open up my Outlook and kind of see what this looks like. Okay, so here, this is what the email looks like. Okay, so a nice branded email. Uh, unfortunately, this one was in my spam folder probably because of the way that we're using HTML or whatever the case may be. But, you know, it. we did get the email, but it's, it's just one of the things that you have to deal with. And I'm sure there's ways around it. I'm just not an email expert on how to create these to where they're not spam. But for the most part, this is doing exactly what we expect it to do. So now we need to update these tokens. And that's what we will tackle in the next video, as well as give this a more meaningful subject line instead of test test we we'll have our use our subject line token and pass that in so until then i'll see you in the next video